this and I want to read a scripture and then I want to show you a video that will encapsulate my scripture that I'm sharing with you on today. I want you to go to the book of Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Our theme today or this week has been extreme. Somebody say extreme. This theme comes from our presiding bishop's theme for the year for the church of God in Christ. Christ's extreme sacrifice calls for our extreme commitment. Mother Van Zant preached a powerful message on Thursday night and blessed us. And then Friday night, our presiding bishop blessed us tremendously. Last night, Pastor Ola and Zoe blessed us tremendously. And I'm not going to preach today. I'm just going to say a few things. And we're going home. Okay, I'm going to preach, but I want you with me. Acts chapter 4, verse Let's start at verse 5, and we're going to read down to verse 13. Are you there? And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people, elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well. Let it be known to you all and to the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you, here before you whole. This is the stone which the, was, was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Now is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Our theme is extreme because I believe God gave our presiding bishop this theme because God is calling for an extreme church, extreme saints to turn around in these extreme times. How many people here play soccer? Raise your hand. If you play soccer, if you ever played soccer, if you've ever played soccer in your life, how many of you here people have watched soccer? How many of you in here play extreme soccer? See, there's a lot of Christians, but God is calling for some extreme Christians. Now, you've played soccer, you watch soccer, now I want to show you something extreme. And I believe this video is going to show you in the spirit what God wants you to be in the spirit. I want you to see this soccer player, and what he does in soccer, I want you to do in the spirit. Play my video, please. Your brainstorm, the age in better form, and 
that I mentioned The H.O. rock the whole damn nation From block to block It don't stop till we see the cops Moving to a better spot Hip-hop won't stop Pop, lock, and break hey. Maybe even skate I get my tank for the flesh breaks Bringing real Spanish and damage Those who imitate Try to emulate But they fade Catch your case Penetrate, stimulate With a sound they love to hate Put your hands in the sky Don't lie, it feels good And my track gets props In the roughest neighborhood soccer that, that 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 is a wow somebody said wow see there's a lot of people who play soccer but I haven't seen many people do extreme soccer like that to go to a level that takes he didn't just wake up in the morning and decide to do that he didn't just get up and say you know I'm a soccer player and let me just climb a pole with the stick in my mouth with the ball spinning. It took time, preparation, and he put himself on an extreme level. I went through extreme sports. I looked at a lot of things, and as we look at extreme and what God is calling for us to be extreme, I believe God is calling for us to do some supernatural things that will amaze the world. This brother is from Africa. He's from uh, Gambia. He's from Gambia. He was in France doing this. But if he can do it, that means others can do it. But I don't need you to go out and practice to play like him, but I need you to see yourself in the spirit just as he is in soccer. I need you to see yourself and say, God, I want you to do some amazing things in my life, in my church, and take the limits off. I want you to think so big that you can do some things that your family, your friends, your enemies have never seen in their lives. When we read this text in Acts chapter 4, it is the result of extreme Christians who were tired of going to church as usual. There were some extreme Christians who had gotten filled with the Holy Spirit, and the next time they came to church, they could not fit into the same mode that they had been fitting in before. They had come to a conclusion that enough is enough, and if I'm going to take the time and the energy to go to the church, I want God to do some extreme things through me. Now, maybe I'm not talking to you, but I hope I'm talking to a few people in the South Africa first jurisdiction and wherever in the church of God and Christ who says, God, I want you to do amazing things through me. Am I talking to anybody? If if I'm talking to you, just shout hallelujah. Then I know who I'm talking to. I can't go through everything here, but Peter, remember Peter? Peter was a swearing Cowardly, talk too much, uneducated fisherman who had a dirty job. He was never around people because he worked night shift. When everybody else was up and going to doing things, he was asleep. When everyone else was asleep, he was awake working. He did not get along with people well. Even Jesus himself called him Satan. <laughs> 
Get behind me, Satan, Jesus said. He has a history of messing up. He had a history of putting his foot in his mouth and doing things that were not always right. But there was a time where there was a change in his life. And I'm believing God that there will be a change in our church, in our lives, in our jurisdiction. Yes, we came here. Somebody told me it's better to go to a small place and fill it up than to go to a big place and there's empty chairs. And I said, the devil is a lie. Because, see, if you put a big plant in a small pot, it can only go so high. And so I said, Lord, I don't want to be in a small pot and look good. Put my small plant in a big pot so I have room to stretch out because we got extreme ministry to go and to grow. And I'm expecting God to do more. When we come to the convocation, we come together so that God can speak to us and inspire us so that we go home and aspire to more. It's not time just to come to a meeting. And so God said, get into a place. And that's what he did to Peter. Peter, he went fishing. He went back to what he was used to doing. He went back to his old life because he was a failure in his Christian life. Do you ever feel like a failure as a Christian? The more you pray, it seems like the more hell there is in your life. The more you fast, it seems like things are going wrong. Sometimes the more you give, it seems like the less money you have. But I'm here to tell you God is calling for some extreme Christians that will look beyond your situation and look to a place not where I am, but I'm going to see where I'm going. Come on, somebody give God some praise. Peter went fishing in John chapter 21. Peter went fishing. But while he was looking for fish, Jesus was on the beach. What he was looking for, Jesus already had. What he thought he could do on his own, Jesus already had for him. And he said, Peter, have you caught anything? It reminded him of something Jesus had said before. When Jesus first saw him, he said, have you caught anything? And so now they say, come to the beach. And Peter sees him and says, he takes off his clothes. And he, well, and he no, he put on his coat because he was fishing. In the King James, it says, naked. In other verses, it says in his underwear. Either way, he was mad. Nobody goes fishing in their underwear. Maybe you do. But he was mad. Because sometimes our failures, sometimes our limitations, sometimes the things in our lives can drive us literally mad. Mad with guilt. Mad with shame. Mad with regret. Mad wondering what could have happened. Mad trying to fix things that we could not fix before. But thank God that when he calls us, if we come, he can change our situation. Peter went to Jesus and he was cooking the fish that he was looking for. And he told him three times. For the three times that Peter denied him, Jesus restored him. Feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Mama talked about it the other night. Feed my sheep, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. In other words, as you serve me, I'm going to restore you. Because if you sit around waiting for God to answer your prayers without serving, you're going to stay stuck where you are. Nobody stays depressed while they continue to serve others. Nobody stays down when you look and say, I may be poor, but I'm not so poor that I cannot help somebody else. My church may be small, but we can help an orphan somewhere. When you get to the point to say, I will feed his lambs, I will feed his sheep, there's something supernatural will come inside of you. You'll find yourself going places you never went before. You'll find yourself doing things you never thought you could do. Lord, I'm sitting between two great men. How did I get in that chair? I didn't plan to sit in that chair. I was just working and I looked up and they said, sit there. When I looked to my right, there was a great man. When I looked to my left, there was a great man. Some of the things that you're looking for God to do, some of the things that we fight for is not in pushing to get to the front, but it's pushing to serve God. And when you serve God, that's why the word says in Matthew 6, verse 33. Let's go above that. Stop worrying about what you're going to eat. Stop worrying about the rent. Stop worrying about what people think about you. 
Stop worrying about who's talking about you on Facebook. It don't say that, but it implies it. Don't worry about all those things. The heathens worry about all those things. The heathens worry about what they're going to eat. Then it says, but seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be. And so Peter was restored. And then Peter comes. Not only was he restored, but in Acts 2, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. In other words, he was filled with the power of God. He was saved. And then he came before God and said, fill me with your spirit. God filled him with his spirit like a car is filled with petrol. Like tires are filled with air. He was filled with the spirit. And the first thing he did when he was filled with the spirit, he didn't go to the mall. He didn't go to hang out with his friends. He said, I'm going to church. I want to go to church. But on his way to church, he found church. Because, see, before he would fill with the Spirit, he was so busy going to church, he had missed the church. Because this building, as beautiful as it is, Pastor Peter, I know he's around here somewhere. As beautiful as this building is, and I'm going to build one like it. In the name of Jesus. That's why I'm here. Because I need to know how I feel to preach in a pulpit like this. I need to know how it feels to be on the screen so, so when I get one, I know how to act. Sometimes you got to go somewhere where you're going so you can look around and say, I know how, then I know how to handle things. I know how it is to preach in a location, but I never preach with such nice carpet. You got to go where God has taken you. Not only am I looking at all the stuff, I'm looking at how they run the place. Okay, so you do that. So you do this. <laughs> See, some people are so stuck with fear, you feel like you can't go nowhere. You've never been to Woolworths. Who told you you couldn't go in Woolworths? I can't go in Woolworths. I can only go to the gula down the street. Go in Woolworths and walk around with the shopping basket. Take a trolley. When I get money, I'm going to buy that. When I get money, I'm going to buy that. I'm going to get that kind of ice cream. I'm going to buy that kind of nyama. It don't smell bad. I don't need vinegar for that nyama. I want the fresh nyama. I'm out talking to somebody. Then go buy a lunch bar and leave. Thank you. That'll be all for today. I'll see you next time. Sometimes you got to go places you've never been. Shine your shoes, comb your head, put on your best wig and walk in like you own the place. Don't hold your head down. You walk in and say, yeah. If you shopping at Pep now, go to Eggers and try to close on in the dressing room. Put them on in the mirror and say, I can't wait till I buy this. They can't stop you from trying it on. Tell somebody dream big. Go extreme. Quit trying to be like everybody else. God has given you something new, something different that the world has never seen. The scripture was read at the beginning of the scripture this time. Eyes have not seen, neither have ear heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man. The things that God has in store for you. Somebody shout yes! Get extreme. So what you live in the village, the village don't live in you. So what you live in the lotion, the lotion is not in you. You don't know your daddy, but your daddy in heaven loves you. Your mama may not be a good mama, but the Bible says, when my father and my mother forsake you, I will be there to pick you up. We coming back here next year. 
and this place will be full next year. Bishop, if you don't come, that's all right. You don't have to because when we're here next year, you will already have been here. The seeds that you have planted will, Lord, have mercy. Don't be like that girl in high school who only likes ugly friends so she can look pretty. Get around people that look better than you. Get around people that have more than you. And don't be jealous because when who you around, then you're going to go to that level. See, Peter went to church with somebody filled with the Spirit. He didn't go to church with just anybody. He went to church with John. And when you're going, when you're walking with the right people, you will see the right things. And God would do something. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Who are you walking with? Who are you going with? You show me who's around you close, and I'll show you who you are. You hang around Daga smokers. You just no good. You may not smoke Daga, but you got a Daga brain. You hang around Pooza face, then you got a Pooza face brain, even if you don't drink. You hang around Tootsies, then you got a Tootsie mind. You hang around East Fabe, you got an East Fabe. Lord have mercy. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. I said it. I said it in Jesus' name. I said it because I'm going extreme. Somebody shout extreme. These boys, these boys going to church had an attitude because they recognized what was in them before was no longer in them. What was in them before was replaced. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Patton, he read Greek. I don't know if this is the same John or not. But he said... You have overcome little children. You have overcome little children. The implications of calling us little children implies that we are helpless. Implies that we're defenseless and dependent. You have overcome little children. Why? Because. How can you be a child and an overcomer? How can you not be fully grown but you are an overcomer? You have overcome little children because greater. See, greater means more than. Greater is he. Pronoun, the antecedent going back to Jesus. Greater is he that is in. than he that is in the world. When you get extreme, you start to recognize. When you walk down the street, you recognize, can't nobody stop me. Can't nobody block me. Can't nobody undermine me. Because all you try to do against me, I'm not clever. I'm not powerful. I may not be as sophisticated as, you know, everybody else. I may not act like you expect me to act, and that's because you don't act like that. Some people will take you small. But you recognize it ain't about me. Greater is he that is in me. So when I walk down the street, when I, thank you, when I serve in my church, I recognize there's nothing we cannot do. I'm talking to extreme people. I'm talking to extreme people. There's nobody I cannot lead to Christ. Because he is no longer I. What's that? What's that? Thank you, Ugo Chuku. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. 
And when I know when I'm walking down the street, even the Tootsies can't touch me unless he gives them permission. And even when my enemies fight me, it works to my advantage. Am I talking to somebody? I'm going to get to the scripture in a minute. I'm almost done. What does it say in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20? Little teenager stolen from home, thrown into a pit. See, you need to know your promotion goes this way, not this way. Your promotion is inversely proportional to the challenges which you face. The deeper the challenge, the higher the promotion to come. The deeper the pit, the higher the promotion. Are you in a deep pit? Do you have big enemies? Are you in a bad spot? Are they trying to take you from your job? Are there people trying to drive you mad? Then you're in a good place. You're in a place where God is going to show the world that what you meant for evil, I meant it for his good. Now I've heard preachers mess that scripture up. I've heard them mess it up because they say what you meant for evil, God will turn around for your good. And then people start running in circles saying he's going to turn it around. God don't have to turn anything around because he's sovereign. <laughs> he's in control. And so even when it looks like it's going in the wrong direction, it was always, in the, always going in the direction that he planned. Extreme. See, I need you to leave the convocation so blessed that when you go home, when you get to school, you're going to lead some folks. You don't have to lead them to Christ. Just tell them how good God been to you. Live a different life in front of them. So extreme that your teacher will wonder, how did you change? So extreme, you won't be stealing from your job anymore. Paper. Paper clip, no more bread at the job. You don't have to steal. You live right. Their bottom line will increase. And they will say, God is with you. Am I talking to somebody? So extreme. You're so extreme that you dare to change your strategy in your church. And you dare to go knock on every door. Even if they look like they will never come, you will invite them anyway and watch God move. So extreme that even if you don't have the gifts of healing and prophecy, you will believe God to heal people through you. Because here's the, here's the kicker. Man, I really was going to go through these points. But in the next one hour, I got to be done. <laughs> My wife taught me a long time ago, don't put yourself on a limit that you can't keep. So I know I can keep the hour time limit. And I can feel in the spirit some people over here are angry about that. <laughs> When you find yourself in a place that seems so difficult and you're in an extreme place and say, God, use me, just as Peter and John was, and it seems like everything is going awry and it's going astray, you get to the point to say, God, I'm expecting you to do great things through me. And see, the problem is that we have limited the Lord. This is the last point I want to say and I want to pray. We have limited the Lord based on our gifts. I made a mistake in my church, and I had to ask my church for an apology. I did gifts analysis, and we did all these studies and taught on the gifts and the gifts of the Spirit, and then we wrote tests, and then we were able to identify what each and every person's gift was. And I honed in. You got the gift of teaching. You got the gift of this, and you got the gift of that. And I don't know if that's really biblical. <laughs> I don't know if I think I was wrong. Because when you have the Holy Ghost, all the gifts of the Holy Ghost are in you. I need you to hear this. All the gifts of the Holy Ghost are in you. But they're not all functioning at the same time. They function based on the current assignment. So even if you don't see the gift of administration, when you get in a place where you need to administrate, the Holy Ghost takes over and shows you what to do. 
There don't have to be a special healer around with the gift of healing because when somebody is sick, the Bible says these signs shall follow all those that believe. They will lay hands on the sick and they will cover. You got the power of God inside of you and whatever he assigns you to do, you then will be empowered. He will activate that gift to use you. Lord, I wish I was talking to somebody. And so for many of us, we have limited ourselves to very normal lives, very normal ministries, very normal visions, because I can only do this. I can only do that. I am gifted at this. And God is saying, take the limits off and let me be God. If... Everybody says if there's vision, there will be provision. But we limit it to money. So we say if there's vision, there'll be provision. And then we look for chalete. But I believe the provision is even the activation of gifts. That you will be able, once you say yes and step in a place that you've never been, you will find yourself able to do things that you were never able to do. If you say yes and go to a nation where they don't speak any of the 11 official, nobody Columas, nobody can boo, no one can prat or talk. They say, hi, 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 hi. I'm your high. That's where you going next week. If anybody Chinese, I was not swearing, please. But when you get there, you say, Holy Ghost, I don't understand. Help me to understand. Do you know he will give you the gift of interpretation? Whew. I know it because I've been there. I'm not talking about fire. I'm talking about right here. Oh. And so as extreme people, if you read that chapter, there's a lot of extreme things they did. But right down at the end, it said, after they were threatened, after all the things they did, they prayed to God. They were filled with the Holy Ghost, and the place was shaken. God shook the place, and they left with even more extreme ministry. Now, I'm done preaching because I want God to shake this place. I don't want you leaving saying, ah, the bishop preached. Woo, you preach, bishop. I want you to leave and say, I need to get somewhere. I'm changed. I got to do some extreme things. He's going to turn, he's going to turn you from somebody weak to a Bruce Lee in the spirit. He's going to give you power like never before because the, he promised you shall receive matimba, a mandla, matla, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, when you look in Acts, it said they were filled with the Holy Ghost and the place was shaken, but they had already been filled with the Holy Ghost. Bishop, I know you know, yeah, in Acts 2. And now they're being filled with the Holy Ghost again in Acts 4. And that was not a long span of time. They came out the upper room, preach, 5,000 people get saved, go heal the man, 3,000 people get saved, go to jail, get out, and then they come back and be refilled with the Holy Ghost within days. Get a church of 8,000 people. They didn't hire a marketing manager. They didn't get their website out. They went back and laid before God. <laughs> there was exponential growth, but they didn't get puffed up and say, I have arrived. Because, see, I recognize I have not arrived. There's so much I don't know, but I thank God for the Holy Ghost who knows everything. Now... They went and they were refilled with the Holy Ghost and then they were able to go back. And even when people beat them, they gave God praise and said, thank you for counting us worthy to get beaten. Beat me again. Because I'm doing it for Jesus. When you fill with the Holy Ghost, your problems don't go away. Your perspective changes. So when you're at this level with the, with the giant, he looks big. But when you go higher... Look small. I want to pray. If I'm talking to anybody, come meet me at this altar. Come now. If you're asking God, I want an extreme ministry. I want an extreme life.